We have now reached the end of our training tutorial and this time, we will be covering topics on how to create smaller independent business modules called microservices out of a monolithic Jakarta EE application. Let us now open this section by presenting some recipes on how to build microservices using Red Hat's Thorndale. Microservices architecture is a service-oriented software design which aims to break down a monolithic application into smaller independent functional business units. It uses Eclipse Micro Profile as one of the standards in creating scalable, portable, fault-tolerant Jakarta EE microservices. And among all the providers and frameworks used to build microservices, it is Red Hat's Thorntail that spearheads the use of the latest Eclipse Micro Profile 2.2 through its Melray artifacts. The Eclipse Micro Profile 2.2 includes the following vendor neutral modules. First, it has the CDI 2.0, JOX RS 2.1, the JSON Processing Plugin. It also includes the Micro Profile Config, which retrieves all information from any sources and injects them through its own CDI to the application unaware of the sources of this information, its own fault tolerance. API, which makes the application resilient from its failures. It also includes its own health module, which generates reports regarding the health of each service, the metrics plugin, which generates performance data regarding the platform, Java virtual machine, and the application. It also includes the JSON Web Toolkit for the authorization and authentication of the microservices. The MicroProfiles Open API, which is a standard documentation mechanism defining all JAX RS services, its own open tracing plugin, which provides a distributed tracing mechanism to all access requests across the service boundaries, and then it also includes a REST client plugin and the JSON binding specification. Let us now create a new Maven project which will import all the Thorntail dependencies and then we register its smell rays version of the micro profile artifact. We also include the MySQL connector and Hibernate dependencies for our JPA implementation. And we also include the servlet dependency for any servlet implementation in the application. And since we are creating a JPA layer, we need to include the persistence.xml inside our class path resources folder there. But do not include any CDI bin descriptor file since the CDI bin scanning will be implemented automatically by the platform using weld. By the way, our JPA layer will be using a resource local persistence unit to be accessed by our previously implemented DAO class, product DAO impol, there. And this application will be using product DAO service and product data repo service, which we created in section six, there. It also has our login application, there. To show you that Thorntail runtime can also execute servlets. But let us focus and manage the JAX RS resources since this will mainly comprise the microservices. We can fine tune and make these services resilient by applying the fault tolerance features of the micro profile. This includes the timeout annotation, which imposes restrictions on the execution time of a service. In this example, if list products will exceed 100 milliseconds in retrieving records from the database, the platform will throw a timeout exception. We can also trap any exception by associating a fallback method there to a service using the fallback annotation. But we see to it that the fallback method has the same set of local parameters as the service method. And to recover from a particular exception, we can impose a retry policy on a service using the retry annotation. We can also further configure the policy by specifying the maximum number of retries for a user to successfully 
And to recover from a certain exception, we can impose a retry policy on a service through the retry annotation. We can further configure the policy by specifying the maximum number of retries a user can take before it successfully accesses the endpoint, the maximum duration before a user accesses the endpoint, and the time delay between two retries. Now, we can also restrict the number of access requests to a service using the bulkhead annotation. If the number of requests exceeded the limit, the platform will throw a bulkhead exception. Now, this feature is only applied to those services that consumes huge amount of time and resources just to execute. And lastly, we can prevent repeated failures by applying a circuit breaker to a service endpoint. In this example, if 50% of five consecutive access or failures, the platform will throw a circuit breaker open exception, which will eventually open the circuit. It will stay open for 500 milliseconds and then it will go partially close. If the platform detected six consecutive successful accesses, the circuit will eventually close, normalizing the situation. Aside from fault tolerance APIs, Microprofile has a metrics module which can be used to generate reports on some performances. It has some global API classes such as Discounter, which can be used to count the number of failures encountered by all service endpoints. It has its own annotations such as this metered, which can be used to generate percentage reports on the number of accesses done to a certain service endpoint. And to enable the health module of MicroProfile, we need to implement its health check interface. Don't forget to make this class an application scope bin class. And to make this class a discoverable microprofile bin, we need to decorate this with the health annotation. To properly deploy and run this project as a microservice, we need to include the following Thorn Maven plugin into our pom.xml, either to package this whole project as an independent jar file using the gold package, or directly run this project using this Eclipse. There. By the way, don't forget to include the logging status configuration when running the microservice since Thorntail enables logging by default. So let us now run this microservice. So it's now repackaging our war, starting a new war, loading all the installed plugins, and now we successfully deployed our project. So now let's run our application. It's now building and creating a war file, loading some artifacts from the Maven there and start deploying the Maven dependencies. And now it's up. We have successfully deployed our microservice app. So now let's access one of our endpoints there. By the way, we do not include the context root when accessing resources from a microservice. So we immediately access main JAX-RS endpoint followed by our resource endpoint. Let's try our product list. The execution exceeded 1,000 milliseconds, so timeout exception was thrown. Let's access again. So there, all the records are now accessed from the table. We can also access the generated reports through the metrics endpoint. We can see the application performance report generated by our metered annotation there. Some portion are application-based. Some are platform generated, and some information reference to the Java virtual machine. We can also check the health of all the services using the endpoint health. So from this result, no problems are encountered. All services are healthy because of the status app. We can also run our servlet application if we want to. Now, there are so many ways how to stop our Thorntail microservice, but in my case, I'm going to explicitly kill the process connected to my port 
8080. So first, I'll be executing my net stack to check what's the process ID. It's 5420. And then I'm going to kill it using task kill command. to stop our microservice. It has terminated, so our microservice is now not running. 